So we have this application that we hooked up to a REST API in the last video. Now let's say we want to add some form of authentication so that only authorized users can utilize our backend. As with the last video, the backend is built with Go, but it doesn't particularly matter that it's built with Go. You could use absolutely anything you like. The focus will be on the fundamentals of the authentication and authorization mechanism that we'll be using. And we'll be using just about the most stock standard authentication approach that has been around since probably the mid 17th century or something. Server side sessions and client side cookies with session IDs. Although this is an extremely common approach, it is worth noting that this is not the only way to do authentication. There are many options to choose from, trade-offs to consider, and many hairy and dangerous issues when dealing with authentication and sensitive user data. We will intentionally be avoiding these issues and instead focus on the fundamental idea of using session cookies to protect endpoints. We will cover the concepts of having a server create a session, sending a cookie representing that session to an Angular application, and then using that cookie to authorize future requests to the API from the Angular application. So let's start by adding a login screen to the application. This is a good start, but it's quite easy to just bypass this login screen entirely by directly going to a route. As an Angular developer, you might be familiar with the concept of route guards. We can have a route guard that would prevent access to this page that is supposed to require the user to be authenticated. But this can provide a false sense of security. A route guard doesn't stop anyone from just hitting your API endpoints directly. And given that this is all client-side code that can be viewed and modified by your users, people could still even access the UI for your protected routes if they really want to. Route guards in Angular are for user experience, not security. Route guards are sort of the equivalent of those arrows they put on the floor at IKEA. They can help show people where they are supposed to go and provide a smoother experience, but no amount of arrows or staff-only signs are going to stop a malicious actor from stealing Swedish meatballs from the cafeteria. For that, you'll need one of those fancy doors that require an RFID badge to open it, which is basically the same concept as sessions. So since we can't rely on the front end to provide security for us, this means your application needs to be designed in such a way that it doesn't matter what anyone does on the front end, or whether they follow the arrows or not. We need to focus on securing the back end so that it never sends data it shouldn't to the front end in the first place. So we're going to focus on securing the API itself. I'm going to go light on the details here because this isn't about Go specifically, and this is an overly simplistic example anyway. The simplifications I've made make this particular implementation completely insecure and it should absolutely not be used in production. We are just aiming to understand the general concept without abstractions and libraries obscuring the fundamental ideas. So first we've added this session store that maps strings to booleans. This is where the data for any sessions on the server would be stored. The strings would be the session IDs, and in this case we just want to know if a particular session exists or not, so we just use a simple boolean. We also need to update the cause configuration to allow authorization headers and cookies coming from our Angular application. And we now also have just one publicly available endpoint, which is a login endpoint. And all of the other endpoints have been moved inside of this protected routes group, which is protected by this require auth function. We will take a look at that in a moment. For now, let's see how this login endpoint works. All we are using for our credentials here is a simple plain text password that is the same for all users. Again, please keep in mind this is an oversimplified example. If we were actually authenticating against user accounts here, we would be checking against hashed passwords, not plain text. So we check if the password is correct, and if it is, we create our session. In a real scenario, the session ID needs to be unique for each user, and it needs to be generated using a cryptographically secure generator. Realistically, you would use a library to abstract this away, but for our simplified scenario, we are just using a basic string as the session ID. We add this session ID to our session store map, and now we have state on the server that it indicates that this particular session ID is authorized. Now, if we give this session ID to our Angular application, the front end can send it along with future requests to authorize the request using that session ID. In a sense, sending the session ID is basically the same idea as sending along a password with every request. But there are some advantages to using session IDs, like limiting the impact of credentials being stolen, having control over the session on the server, and not needing to perform expensive hashing operations to check passwords for every request. 
In order to provide this session ID to the Angular application, we have our server set a cookie in the HTTP response headers. This particular configuration will set an HTTP only cookie in the browser. With some additional configuration on the front end, our Angular application will send this cookie to the server automatically in the HTTP request headers whenever future requests are made. This is how the server will know the request is legitimate. It will grab the session ID from that cookie and check that it is valid. Again, there are important cookie considerations here that we are skipping over. Things like the role of HTTP only, secure and same site configurations from a security perspective. The server really does most of the heavy lifting for us, but there is still some configuration required on the client side. Basically, we need to set the with credentials option on our HTTP request so that the HTTP only cookie that the server sets in the response from our login request gets included in the headers of all future requests. To make this simpler in Angular, we can create an HTTP interceptor that looks like this. This allows us to intercept any HTTP request, modify it in some way, and then send it on its way. In this case, we just modify the request to set with credentials to true, and then the request continues as normal. We can then just apply this interceptor when providing our HTTP client, and then it's going to apply to all of our HTTP requests. Then on the front end, all we have to do is perform a normal login and make normal requests after that, and all of the session stuff will be handled automatically. If there's a valid session cookie, the request will work. If there isn't, the requests will fail. We could now add things like route guards or any other improvements we like if we want to provide a better user experience on the front end. But the important part is that now the endpoints we want protected cannot be utilized in any way without a valid session. Or at least that's the idea. I'll reiterate one more time that this example is simplified and absolutely not secure and should not be used in any way in production. If you found this video useful, please feel free to leave a like or subscribe before you go. And let me know if you'd like to see more backend stuff in future videos.